Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, first of all, I would like to thank all of you that have been putting down comments and questions in the comment section down below. Many of those are very, very good questions. Now, starting next week, I will also begin discussing topics requested by you guys. But this week, let's spend a little bit more time on discussing new mutations in the coronavirus, specifically the N501V2 variants. So if this is your first time visiting the channel, I'm Dr. Hong. I love to make science review videos, updates on the latest global health topic. I also like to share students' learning tips and tricks occasionally. Now, if these are your interest topic, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you are coming back for another week of COVID-19 update, thank you very much. Now, without further ado, let's dive into the topic. All right, like I said at the beginning, let's look at the latest research available that it can be found online regarding the N501Y and the V2 variants and what are the potential effects on vaccines. Now, again, a disclaimer, this video is my summary interpretations of publicly available scientific information. This video does not serve as any advices on treatment diagnosis and preventions of any diseases and if I mention any commercial company in the video, I do not have affiliations with them. So first, let's look at some of the backgrounds, okay? A recap, this N501 and 6970 deletions, or so-called the B117 lineage, was first observed in the UK. Now, there is a very closely related lineage of variants, which is called the 501Y.V2 lineage. Now, it contains three major mutations, the N501Y, K417N and also the E484K mutation that was mainly observed in South Africa. Now, all of these variants and mutations have been shown to increase binding to ACE2 receptors, and these mutations also help the virus to gain ability to infect mice. Now, today we are going to look at what are the scientists doing which mutation is the worst, implications for recovered patients, and would the vaccine still work, and as well as how could the vaccine adapt the changes that we've seen. Now, let's look at the fact number one. What are scientists doing? Okay, and I find two major studies that are still in preprints that, that are available online. First one is using computational model, okay, using computer to predict or calculate how N501Y and K417N changes spike protein and how it bind to antibodies and ACE2 receptors. And the second one is using plasma of vaccinated people. Now this is an actual experiment and determine if the antibodies in these vaccinated people can still neutralize 501Y viruses. Alright, so let's look at some of the results, okay? Now what, which mutation is worse? Now, from the computational study based on one type of antibody selected from a recovered patient, this particular antibody is known to be able to bind to some of the older mutations identified on the spike protein. Now, with this antibody and using the variants or mutated spike protein, they put in the computer to calculate some of the binding energies, and they find out with this 501Y mutation, it showed decreased binding to this antibody by 116 times compared to the non-mutated versions, and also increased binding to ACE2 receptor. Now, with additional mutations, okay, when the calculation including both the 501Y plus the K417N mutation, this dramatically decreased the antibody binding. And it also appears this new mutation that are specific in the South Africa string, the K417N, seems to play a bigger role. Now, all of those combined also increased binding to ACE2 receptor. Now, these calculated computational results do match experimental data we have so far. 
Now let's look at fact number three. What is the implications for recovered patients? Okay, now look at the antibody. Okay, I mentioned in the previous fact, it said it was selected from a recovered patient. Okay, that gave a, a fancy name to it, C11. Now remember, this is only one type of antibody, but it may not work as well when it's only behaving as a single type of antibody. Now it is very important to remember when. Us, when human gain immunity either from previous infections or from vaccines, we also develop something called T cell immunity. Now, T cell is a cytotoxic T cell, which means it can directly kill viral infected cells. So, this is something the experimental data were not determined. Okay, so let's keep this in mind. Also, when we develop immunity, we don't just produce one type of antibody that can fight. That spike protein on the virus. There are many types, so called polyclonal antibodies. They can work together to help neutralize the viruses, even with some of the mutations. So let's look at fact number four. Would vaccines still work? Okay, now Pfizer very recently did an experiment. They sponsored an experiment using sera, okay, containing antibodies of 20 previously vaccinated participants. Okay, these people received the, the Pfizer mRNA vaccines, and they took the blood and used the antibody inside to see if it can still neutralize 501. Y strings. Okay, now they did show it was okay. Okay, no reductions in neutralizations. Okay, it worked as well as those in the non mutated strings. However, there is a huge limitation in the study. So they did not include all mutations that find in the UK and as well as in the South Africa string. Now, but this serum was able to neutralize other older mutations that were found previously. So what does it mean? How could the vaccine adapt for changes? Okay, now this ties back into the mRNA technology. Now there is a video link down there or up there. You can review mRNA technology if you are still not sure what this is about. Now the advantage of mRNA technology is that it is very easy to change the mRNA sequences to produce a new version of spike protein. And really you only need to do a very minor modifications in the mRNA to change the spike protein expressions and does not need to redesign the rest of the component of the vaccine. So this is a big plus for mRNA technology. So what is the take home message for today? Now M501V2 okay, can better evade antibodies than M501 based on computational and experimental data, which means the South Africa string is more dangerous than the UK string. Now studies only look at antibodies, okay? Now they did not look at T cell immunity. So what happened have in the computational and other like petri dish type of experiment does not necessarily reflecting what happens inside human body. So keep that in mind. Now Pfizer vaccine induced human sera shown to neutralize M501 variants just as good as those non-mutated one. It is important to know that mRNA technology is very flexible to adapt to changes in the spike protein. Now to learn more, here are the links. Okay, the first two are the preprints of the study that I used and summarized for this video. And also I have additional links talking about the new variants from CDC and other smaller organization websites. So I hope this video have given you some answers on these new mutations and what are the scientists doing to answer these questions. Now, so that is all for this week's COVID-19 update. And I'll see you again next Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, again, please stay safe and healthy. Bye.